Howdy, Daniel Seraf here with Mr. Gray Rochelle, and uh, I just took delivery on this beautiful Rochette acoustic um, guitar. This is his grand soloist model, um, the newest one he's created, and it's an absolutely amazing guitar. So uh, I thought that I'd have him into the studio and we we talk a little bit. Uh, about his building and his history and kind of what's going on with him. So, Gray. Yes, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been building, man? Uh, since 1999. 1999. 1999, cool. yeah. Um, so, did you, uh, have you always been an acoustic guitar builder? Uh, yeah, I have built a couple of electrics, but mainly acoustic is, is where my, my passion is, really. That's cool, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and you play and you're a songwriter as well, right? Yeah, I try to. It's just, you know, it's kind of a hobby, but not, you know, not like Mr. Seraph here. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard him play. Yeah. It sounds real good, and you will too. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, so you're over 100 guitars now. Yeah. Yeah, I would say around 115 or so is what I've built. In that awesome. range yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've got um, a lot of kind of big names playing, like uh, Zach Brown. Yep, Zach. Yeah, he has a couple of my guitars, which was I'm pretty fortunate. For, yeah, Zach to have them. Uh, Edwin McCain has a couple, and he's ordered another. Um, Paul Thorne, have him. Melissa Polinar, she's a really good singer songwriter. Of course, Vicky Ganfin, which is an amazing guitar player. If you don't know Vicky, she's really something. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like Paul Thorne. Like uh, Paul Thorne, yeah. Travis Meadows. <laughs> Travis Meadows, of course, yes. He's an amazing singer-songwriter. Mitch Malloy. Mm -hmm. so, I'm afraid I'm going to leave out somebody. Daryl Scott. How can we forget Daryl Yeah, Scott? can't forget Daryl, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm yeah. pretty well, fortunate. Bunch of kind of, kind of big people playing them, um, you know, and, and your name is definitely growing. I think um, you know, it would be interesting to talk about, before we talk about this guitar specifically, about uh, the Johnny Cash guitar project that yeah. kind of just happened. Yeah, that was that was pretty interesting. Uh, Travis Meadows, the singer songwriter in Nashville, which was he's a really really good singer songwriter. <clears throat> One of his friends, his name is Eric Hamilton. He um, it was actually Johnny Cash's step grandson, hmm. and he played or saw Travis's guitar, and he and John Carter Cash, which is Johnny and June's son, are really close. They grew up together, so. He had access to some wood that Johnny had brought back from uh, Jamaica in the 70s. He, would, he had an estate in Jamaica, and he would put it on his plane, bring it back, and then throw it in the barn in, in Nashville. So I got some wow. of that wood. Yeah. Cool. And, uh, and I built a guitar for John Carter out of that. And I also built one for Eric out of that. So it's, uh, that was pretty special to know that I built a guitar that Johnny Cash had, had his hands on this wood, and I built this guitar for his son. That was uh, awesome. So that was pretty special. Yeah. And there's some other people who have ordered these guitars yep, as well. Yeah, I've got it. Yep, yep. I've got to keep it kind of down low, but yeah, yeah I've got a little bit of the wood, so yeah, I can pretty cool build, build a couple. So yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, and I got to play that guitar, and uh, it's a fabulous, fabulous uh, the dreadnought. The the cash guitar is really sweet. Um, so I met Gray uh, just really a few months ago. Uh, through a friend and student who uh, had a couple of his guitars and I got to play them and was just really blown away. Um, so Gray and I got together and I got to play three of his guitars, this uh, a Grand Soloist model, uh, a Parlor guitar, and uh, the Cash Dreadnought, yeah, yep. which was sweet. And um, there's some demos of those guitars, not the Cash one, but uh, the other two on, on Facebook if you're interested. Um, but I was so blown away that I had to order one and so... Uh, Gray built me this uh, gorgeous guitar. This is his grand soloist model. Um, so Gray, maybe uh, walk us through a couple kind of the appointments on this okay. one. Okay, yeah. And the grand soloist model is probably the that's my most popular model because uh, I was you know more of a finger style player, so I kind of wanted a guitar like that. So that's kind of what I've made. But I have made several jumbos and everything. But this particular guitar, the top is a uh, moon spruce, which the reason they call it moon spruce is comes from Switzerland, and they wait till the moon is a certain phase, and they drop the tree, and so the sap's the slowest. It's supposed to be the same thing they did for like Stradivari violin. It's supposed to be the same process. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, and this this particular model has a lot of bear claw on top of it, which you really can't see. I wish you could really the camera would pick it up. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take some photos and maybe. Uh 
kind of pan through that. Yeah. Uh, so you can see the, I mean, the the top is just ornate with the bear claw. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, so how about, uh, what's the deal with uh, your bridge here? Yeah, the bridge design, that is a, um, if, you ever, if you're familiar with the Kasha design, they was a, a basically a P put them in a put them into a lab and was doing all the uh, uh, physics on how string energy worked on the top and so he came up with a impedance bridge like this and so I kind of adapted it. My bracing is nothing like he did, uh, mm -hmm. but I adapted that to give it more. It does work. I feel like like it does even top out and everything, uh, but it does. It's also distinctive look for my guitar mm -hmm. um, yeah and that's that's ebony correct yes and that is an ebony bridge and i use different i different you know because this one has coca bola bridge mm -hmm. i use honduran uh bridge i actually used bacote bridge before on guitar so nice uh, but uh but yeah i use several different kind of bridges on there so then they, they can also see this in the um mm -hmm. in the photos and, and little video but um basically you're your actual saddle is much wider than a lot yep. of saddles. Yeah, and that is really more of a uh, Urban Samaji, Jason Costell, those guys, uh, that whole uh, that whole group of builders. They use a larger, a, a wider saddle, and I and I have access to those larger saddles now. Um, mm -hmm. And you have just a little more room for for better intonation on the guitar. So awesome, neat, yeah. mm -hmm. cool. Um, okay, cool. So so then talking about. Uh, Maybe the woods some more. Uh, okay. So the back and sides are uh, coca bola, right? Yep, that's coca bola. Yep. And this is a uh, you know you'll be able to see in the video, but it's incredibly figured and uh, beautiful on both the sides and the and the back. Um, so now, uh, coca bola is in the rosewood family, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's got that nice uh, deep resonance, mm -hmm. like a. much of a difference in kind of the tonal quality of, of this versus an Indian or is it more just like the uh, looks? I think it's probably a little it's a little it's definitely harder than Indian rosewood is it's more it's definitely more on the Brazilian side of, of Indian rosewood mm. a lot of people can't use coca bola because of the dust they're allergic to it uh, and it's really oily wood so you have to take extra care on gluing and everything so uh, that's a lot of the reason people don't use it and now they put it kind of in, in really not in danger, but they put it on the list where it's harder to get it imported. So it's mm. you know it, the shot, the price of it has really went up because of that. It used to not be nearly as expensive. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's a great tone wood. Yeah, I mean it just sounds incredible, and I've always liked Coca Bola, so it's yeah. really cool that we yeah we were able beautiful. to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then uh, speaking of the body, um, one of the coolest things that I love about this guitar is the fact that. Um, if you can see in the video, if you can't, uh, I'll zoom in. Uh, but basically, we have what uh, is called a Manzer wedge, right? Yeah. From Linda. Yeah, Linda Manzer. Yeah, yeah, she's another incredible guitar builder, and and she, you can use her wedge design, which is basically it's thinner on the on the bass side, so that it's more comfortable to play. It just feels uh, so nice yeah. to sit with. And yeah, Linda Manzer is really an incredible builder. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love that wedge that she does. You need to check her out because she does uh, guitars for Pat Metheny. She's done some really. The Picasso guitar is a is a work of art. If you've never seen that, yeah, you need to see that. Have you seen it? Those are cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell us a, a little bit about what you did uh, with this neck here. Okay, so we've got five piece, right? Yep, it's five piece neck. Yep. Mm -hmm. and I use uh, the the neck is actually instead of being uh, mahogany. It's actually Makakauba, which is a type of, some people consider it a type of rosewood. It's not probably a true rosewood, but it is definitely as dense as rosewood. Mm. Um, so it's a stiffer stiffer neck. Uh, and I think it helps put more uh, energy into the box itself. And so then I do the five piece, which is maple and um, uh, walnut in the center. So Makakoa, maple, walnut, yep. maple, maple, Makakoa. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, you get that nice, beautiful... A yeah. uh, stripe on there just looks so cool. And so anytime you laminate wood, you know it's going to be stiffer. It's going to be more stable. And on that, in that neck also, I've, it has uh, <clears throat> has that, and it has 
a double, a two-way truss rod, so you can put forward and back bow in it for leaf. And then it also has two uh, graphite rods in it, so it's really, you know, really, I'm trying to make the neck as stable as possible. So yeah. with all those things, and also I epoxy the fingerboard on it so you use any kind of water glue so it doesn't, you know, put any kind of warp into it. So I really try to keep the neck as stable as I can. So and so we, we've got uh, ebony as the fingerboard. Yeah, this one material. has the ebony on the fingerboard. Yes, it does. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you'll see in the pictures, but uh, Gray was able to match that that beautiful Coca Bola on the back with the uh, headstock overlay here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had just enough left to be able to, to use it. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. Yeah. So you know the um, the appearance is just you know absolutely gorgeous. But the thing about a lot of guitars that look really pretty, they don't always play that great. They don't always sound that great. This one is absolutely you know mind blowing all around. It's just a an incredible instrument. And I've played lots and lots of really nice acoustic guitars, you know, including vintage Martins, like pre-war Martins and uh, Wayne Henderson and all that stuff. And there are lots of great guitars, but this guitar has absolutely blown me away. Um, one last thing, or a couple, few other things about the, kind of the appointments of the guitar. So this is uh, pretty gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, so you took a piece of spalted maple, yeah. right? Yeah, it was spalted maple. And you dyed it. Yep. To match the Coca Bola. To match the Coca Bola back and sides. And uh, then what you did is you stained glassed it in mm -hmm. the rosette. Yeah. And that is another, like an Urban Samadhi, Jason Costell thing. Urban started that many years ago. Mm -hmm. And I kind of ad adopted it, you know. We, we, all guitar players and guitar builders, they steal from each other. They <laughs> yeah. Still know, so. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Got to gotta learn from others in order yeah. to improve our craft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I guess the last thing is the binding is all Bacote. Bacote, right? mm -hmm. it is Bacote. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely gorgeous as well. Uh, so, Gray, uh, what guitar are you playing? Okay, this is actually my personal guitar from, let's see, 2001. So, this one's about 15 years old. It's also Coca Bola, and it has an Adirondack spruce top on it. Um, so, you can see my guitars have changed a little, but they're still. The waist is a little narrow on this one compared to Daniel's, and the bracing's a little bit different. But I mean, mm -hmm. the, the basic guitar is, is is very similar to it. And that one, uh, and this one as well, you chose to do uh, soundport. Yeah, right? yeah. I did this soundport after the fact when that became the craze. So I thought, well, this is my own guitar, so I'll just cut a hole in it. <laughs> so, so yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then how about this uh, wild instrument here? Yeah, that is an eight-string baritone, um, and it does have the slant fret on it. Um, yeah. You can see the see that, and I think I think it's twenty-six and a quarter here, mm -hmm. and then twenty-five and a half on the low. So that's the two wow. two skeletons that it has. Yeah, this one's wild. It's really got some uh, some richness in that. <laughs> So uh, this is tuned currently B to B, B to B, right? Yeah. Standard baritone tuning. Yeah. Uh, and it, you say that uh, from playing finger style, it, you've kind of um, a lot of your guitars are built to sound really good in open tunings, mm -hmm. right? That's kind of yeah, and it just kind of happens. I don't know how that works, but <clears throat> I've had people pick up my guitars and like uh, the Kruger, he picked it up and he was like, I mean, this would be a great open tuning guitar. I'm like. That's what I do, sort of. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It was it's really so strange. funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably the way that you just naturally voice it. Yeah, it just, what what your ear, I think, what your ear likes to hear, I think your hands make it do it for some for some reason, which I, you know, like voodoo, I guess, but no, I mean, really, <laughs> you know, you just end up, you're, you're, you just, it kind of just works together. You just keep, until you get what you want out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why, you know, some people say this one sounds better, that one sounds better. You know, it's really subjective because what may sound good to me may sound bad to you. So it's, I like, I build them like the way I think they, sh that I want them to sound, I guess. It's just because they, it's a, yeah. you know, the generic best sounding guitar. There's really not a best sounding guitar. And there are, and you know, we agree that there are many, many fabulous builders nowadays. Oh, yeah. And, and some of your influences and some of oh, your, yeah. your peers as well. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Builders, yeah. yeah, it's neat. And so, uh, 
you know, we're big fans of the guitar in general, so, mm -hmm. but uh, we thought it was time, I thought it was time that people need to hear uh, more about Gray and, and, you know, get a little insight to his work.